The title of our story, A Home with Mama. Sarah and Janet came into the room. What are you doing, Mama? asked Sarah. Their mother was busy putting their things into a bag. She did not answer them. Sarah spoke again. Where are we going, Mama? she said. To the contrary, replied their mother. She sounded vexed and she did not look at them. So here we have a picture with Mama and three children around her. And she appears to be putting some things into a bag and she really looks sad. They had never been to the country before, but they had always heard that it was a nice place. So they did not understand why their mother should be vexed. Is something wrong, Mama? asked Sarah. Their mother looked up at the two girls. She looked as if she wanted to cry. Before she could say anything more, Peter came in from the yard. Peter was the smallest of the three children. I'm hungry, Mama, he said. I want something to eat. I haven't got anything here, she replied. But we are going out now. I'll buy you some bun on the way. Are we going to the country now? Janet asked. But why do we have to move? added Sarah. The girls began to feel frightened. Their mother had such a strange look on her face. We don't have any money to pay for this room any longer, and I don't even have money to feed us sometimes, said their mother, and I can't get any work. So I am taking you to your auntie in the country. She will keep you until I find some work. Then aren't you going to stay with us in the country, asked Janet. No, replied their mother. When I get work, I will come for you. Now the girls knew why their mother sounded vexed. It was because she was feeling sad and did not have the money to look after them. Peter began to cry. He was too little to understand what they had been saying, but he felt that something bad was happening. The two girls were too frightened to cry. Where will you stay while we are gone, Mama? asked Sarah. A lady in the next yard says I can stay with her, replied their mother. But she can't keep all of us. No hurry. We have to catch the bus. Put on your shoes and come. They all walked down the corner to wait on the bus. The girls and their mother were quiet, but Peter had stopped crying and was talking a lot. He was excited about going on a bus to the country. At last the big bus came. They were lucky to find a place to sit. The girls soon forgot how sad they were. As they looked through the windows, they became as excited as Peter. The bus went slowly along the streets. There were a lot of people walking up and down. There were vans and trucks with bananas coming into Kingston. Women sat along the sides of the street. Some were selling fruits, but others were selling pots and pretty clothes. So here we have the picture now with the children looking out the window. One is trying to talk to Mama, but Mama clearly is not happy with what is happening. Then the bus began to go faster. What a lot of buildings, said Sarah. What are they, Mama? Those are factories, replied their mother. If I could get a job in a factory, I would have enough money for us. Their mother used to work in a shop. But after a while, there was not enough work for her. So she lost her job, and it was a long time that she had been out of work. Sarah knew that her mother was still feeling sad. Mama, I am sure you will get a job in a factory, she said. Then they left the big building behind and were passing cane fields. Sarah knew all about cane, sugar, and rum. She had learned about these things from her teacher. Will we go to school? Mama, she asked. Yes, replied their mother. There is a school close to where your auntie lives, and her little girl goes there. It was the first time the children had heard about their aunt's little girl. They had heard their mother speak about their aunt before, but they had never met her. Is auntie's little girl big like us? asked Janet. She is as old as Sarah, their mother answered. The children thought it would be nice to have another little girl to play with. Then the bus stopped at the place where people were selling goats. The children had never seen so many goats before. 
I hope auntie has goats, Peter shouted. Does she have goats, mama? No, replied their mother. She only keeps chickens and cows. Outside the bus, a man walked along with a box on his head. He was selling all kinds of things. Some of the people were buying sweets or drinks, but their mother got bun for them to eat. After a while, the bus started again. They passed by fields with trees and cows. Sometimes they saw small buildings along the side of the road. Then, at last, the bus stopped, and they got off. The children and their mother walked along a dirt road, and just as they were getting tired, they came to a house. It was a pretty house with a veranda, and there were white curtains at the windows. There were two cows and some chickens in the yard. Their mother knocked at the gate. A little girl came out of the house and looked at them. She had a doll in her hand. Mama! She shouted. Some people are at the gate. And here we have the picture with Mama and her three children at the gate. We can see who we think is Auntie and a little girl with the doll and we can see the cow. A woman came out on the veranda and looked. Oh, it's you, Essie. She called out, come in. She did not think that the woman was very happy to see them, but she must have known who they were because she called their mother's name. They went up to the veranda. Children, this is your Aunt Mary, said their mother, and this is her little girl, Sissy. Hello, said Sarah and Janet. Sissy looked at them but did not say anything. So these are the children, Elsie, said Aunt Mary. Well, they are big enough to help out. Thank you for agreeing to keep them for me, said their mother. I will send you some money as soon as I can. I hope so, said Aunt Mary. Jake and I work all the time and it is still hard for us to manage, but I agree to help you because you are my sister. Thank you, said the children's mother in a low voice. I know I will get a job soon. Sarah did not know who Jake was but she thought it must be Sissy's father. Sissy is lucky, Sarah said to herself. She has a father who lives in a house. Their father had died long ago. Sarah could not even remember him, and now they had to be without their mother as well. Are you staying for a little while, Elsie? asked Aunt Mary, but she did not look as if she really wanted their mother to stay. No, replied their mother. I must hurry to get back to town before night. The children followed their mother to the gate. She was looking very sad again. Sarah, she said, you must look after the other two children for me. Yes, Mama, she answered. Janet and Peter began to cry, but Sarah knew she was the oldest and must not cry. In this picture, we have the children at the gate. Mama is telling them goodbye, and some of them are crying. Never mind, their mother said. I will soon come back and I will send money for you as soon as I get a job. Now don't give your auntie any trouble. Their mother held them close, and then she walked up the road. She did not look back. But Sarah knew that was because she did not want to see them crying. Their aunt called them from the gate, and they followed her into the house. It had a front room. That room was a room with white curtains. There were pretty glasses and dishes in the cupboard and pictures on the wall. Everything was very different from the room where they had lived in Kingston. This house had other rooms. Aunt Mary had her own room and so did Sissy. There was even a bathroom inside the house. The children missed their mother, but they were excited about their new life in the country. Their aunt gave them something to eat and then took them to their bedroom. They were tired after coming all the way from town and so they went to sleep quickly. In the morning, the children met Jake. He was a big man with a kind face, but he did not say much. Aunt Mary gave everyone porridge, and then she spoke in a sharp voice. Now everybody has to work around here, she said. So Peter, you will work in the field with Jake, and you can help him milk the cows. Janet, you can look after the chickens. You will feed them and pick up the eggs, and you can also keep the yard clean. That shouldn't be hard. And you, Sarah, will help to keep the house clean. And you can help me wash the clothes as well. You are big enough for that. 
Sarah wondered what Sissy was going to do. Soon she knew. Sissy did not do much at all. Sometimes Sissy would help Aunt Mary to wash dishes at night, but most of the time she played with her doll and read books. Aunt Mary said Sissy was a smart girl and that it was a good thing to read books. Sarah and Janet also liked to read, but they did not have the time. The children were always busy working. Every morning before school, Peter would help Jake to milk cows. After school, he helped Jake in the field. So here's a picture with Aunt Mary now telling the children that they would have to work. We can see the bowl of porridge. We see Jake standing in the corner. Every day, Janet would feed the chickens and pick up the eggs. And after school, she would clean up the yard. Sarah was always busy. She would clean up the house and after school, she would help Aunt Mary with the clothes. The children did not mind doing work because they had always helped their mother. It was just that Sissy did nothing. While they worked, she would sit on the veranda and read a book or play with her doll. And Sissy was not friendly. She wouldn't let the girls hold her doll. She wouldn't even let them look at her books, which had many pretty pictures. She did not understand why Sissy didn't like them. After all, they were doing all the work. All that Sissy had to do was play. And every evening at dinner, Aunt Mary was vexed. She quarreled about how hard it was to keep them and talked as if they were not doing enough work. And if she made anything nice like pudding, she would give Sissy a bigger piece than the other children. After they had been there for three weeks, Aunt Mary was quarreling even more than ever. Here we have a picture with Aunt Mary and Jake. Looks as if they are quarreling and these children now are looking very sad about the situation. I don't know how we're going to manage to feed you children, she said one evening at dinner. Your mother hasn't sent any money yet. Doesn't she know she has children? Sarah felt sad. She knew her mother had not forgotten them. Don't say that, Mary, said Jake. The children are working to help us keep them. Don't quarrel with them. You keep yourself quiet, Mr. Jake, shouted Aunt Mary. I don't see you bringing in much money. If I didn't sell eggs and make things for people, what would happen? They are my sister's children. I can talk if I want to. Jake said nothing more. The children felt bad. They missed their mother and wished she would come for them. Sarah cried after the other two children had gone to bed that night. Then, one day when they came home from school, Aunt Mary had a letter in her hand. It had Sarah's name on it. Is it from your mother, she said. The children were very excited. Thank you, she said. She took the letter from Aunt Mary. But, Auntie, the letter is open. Don't forget yourself, girl, she shouted. I'm your aunt. I can open your letter if I want to. I opened it to see if your mother sent any money. Well, she has sent some, but it is not enough. Sarah knew that it was wrong for her aunt to open a letter which was not hers, but she did not say anything more about it. Peter and Janet sat on the step while Sarah read the letter. Is mama coming for us? asked Janet. When is she coming? asked Peter. And here we have the picture of Sarah reading the letter to Janet and Peter. She's not coming now, said Sarah, with a sad look on her face. She has a little job, but it does not pay enough money for us to live together yet. Mama says she will come for us as soon as she gets a better job. They all felt very sad. That night, after dinner, the children sat in their room and talked for a little. Let us write, Mama, said Peter. I want to go home. But we don't have a home with Mama yet, replied Sarah. And if we tell how Auntie treats us, she will only feel bad. We will just have to tell her that we are okay and that we miss her. All right, Janet agreed. But let us ask God to make her come for us soon. The next day, Sarah went to their aunt. Auntie, she said, can you please give me a piece of paper to write, Mama? You think I have papers to write letters? replied their aunt. And who is going to pay to send the letter for you? Well, I suppose you have to write your mother. But just tell her we need more money, she added, as she gave Sarah the paper. Sarah thanked her, but she felt terrible. She knew that it was kind of her aunt to keep them, 
but she wished that things were different. Jake often tried to be nice to them, but Aunt Mary and Sissy did not treat them well. They were always mean. One evening after school, Sarah was washing some clothes. She looked up and saw somebody coming down the road. It looked like her mother, but she was not sure. As the woman came closer, she waved to Sarah. Sarah, it's me, she cried out. Oh, mama, cried Sarah. Is it really you? Sarah was very excited. Janet, Peter, she shouted. Come quickly, mama is here. The children ran to their mother as she reached the gate. She hugged them. She had on a pretty dress and she looked very happy. Sarah hoped that their mother had come for them, but she was afraid to ask her. Peter and Janet could not stop talking. Aunt Mary heard the noise and came out on the veranda. Oh, it's you, Elsie, she said. I see you have on a new dress. If you can buy a new dress, I hope you have brought money to help with the children. Their mother looked proud. Yes, Mary, she said. I have brought more money and I thank you for keeping the children for me. Aunt Mary looked very happy as she took the money. It was no trouble, she said. Sarah couldn't believe their aunt could say that after the way she had treated them. Do you have a job now? Aunt Mary asked their mother. Yes, their mother replied. I have a good job in a factory so I can take the children back with me now. The children were so happy they could not even speak. Aunt Mary looked surprised. You don't have to take them yet, she said. They could stay longer if you want. I am sure it's better for them here in a good home. I am sure that we can feed them better than you can. Sarah hoped that her mother would not agree with Aunt Mary. She felt like shouting, No, Mama, it is terrible here. But she stayed quiet. Thank you, said their mother. But I miss my children. I know we will manage now. Peter and Sarah put their things together quickly. Then their mother made them tell Aunt Mary thanks. And at last the children and their mother walked up the dirt road. As they stood waiting for the bus, their mother spoke to them. Are you children all right? She asked. Oh yes, Mama, shouted Janet and Peter. They were so happy to be with their mother that they had forgotten how sad they were with Aunt Mary. Sarah, did your auntie treat you well? Asked their mother. I know my sister likes to quarrel a lot, but I couldn't do any better. Sarah didn't want her mother to feel bad. It wasn't too bad, Mama, she said, but we missed you very much. Her mother went on. We're not going to live in a big house like auntie's with a veranda and pretty curtains, she said. We have only one room. We don't mind, Mama, replied Sarah. That is what we had before and we were happy. All we want is to be with you. When Sarah said this, her mother smiled. The bus came and they all got on. They passed the farms and the cane fields and the factories as they went back to town. Soon they got off the bus and walked through the streets. At last they stopped. They went into a different yard. It looked clean and had nice little houses. When they reached a pretty blue house, their mother took them to the room at the side of it. This is our new home, she said with a smile. It was a big room and their mother fixed it up and made it look beautiful. Peter, Janet and Sarah were very happy now. They knew that they were going to like the place. But the best thing was that they had a home with their mother again. So let's wrap this story up now. Let's remember to do our summaries and we need to remember the who, what, where, why, when and how. What is the moral of this story? What can we learn from this story? There are many people who are going to be displaced by death in a family or different events. Mommy goes to work abroad, daddy goes to work abroad and people have to move. What can we learn from this story? How can we learn to overcome these situations? So write your summaries, turn them into your teachers. Take care. I'll see you in the next episode.